feet and begin to talk to the Father. Begin to declare your love for Him. Declare him, your love for Him. That you have Him, you will tell it to the whole world. Open your mouths and begin to pray. Talk to the Father. Pray in the Spirit at this time. Pray in the Spirit. Let your whole mind, let your whole attention be in this particular place. Take it away from every form of distraction. Follow through that you may be counted worthy. And it shall be accounted unto you as righteousness as it did to Abraham. Open your mouth and pray, child of God. Declare your love, declare your love, declare your love, declare your love. Declare him to be your only God. Declare him to be the only God in your life. Declare him to be the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Declare him that there is no other God that can contest with his power. Declare him that you have him, you have him as gold. And you will tell you to the world because he's a powerful God. He is a miracle worker. He is a supplier. He is a provider. He is your healer. He is your God. There is none beside him. He is faithful, lasting through every generation. He was never enthroned, never appointed. He came into being by his own power, by his own self. He is the one who appoints, is the one who lifts, is the one who exalts, is the one who enthroned. He is the ancient of days. He is a lily of the valley, he is a fountain of living water. He is the bright morning star, the God who is the God of all some wonder. He is the God who is. He is the light. He is the strength. Open your mouth and declare, declare, declare your love and faithfulness to this God. Somebody is declaring. Pray, child of God. I've got something more than gold. I'm telling you to the world. Jesus is more than gold. More than gold, more than gold. I got something more than gold. Yeah, I tell it to the world. Jesus is more. You are my life. You are my strength. More than gold, more than gold. I got something more. Than Following gold. on my here life, hey. I tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. One more time. More than gold, more than gold. I got something more than gold. I turn it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. At this time, brothers and sisters, I want you to begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus, 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 the blood of Jesus over this territory, over this atmosphere, over this activity at this time. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every power assigned to dethrone every power assigned to demoralize every power assigned to suppress we crush that power by the blood of jesus christ of nazareth somebody pray say child of god declare declare plead the blood of jesus christ of nazareth plead the blood plead the blood the blood of jesus christ of nazareth the blood of jesus christ of nazareth over these prayers, over this assembly, over the instruments, over everything we do at this time, the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We plead the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rage. We plead the blood. I plead the blood. The blood of Jesus, we plead the blood, the blood of Jesus, we plead the blood, we plead the blood, the blood of Jesus, we plead the blood, the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I want to hear that amen in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Before I begin to say anything, brothers and sisters, while I was praying, the Lord wanted to declare this, this word. Receive it in your spirit and say emphatically, 
nothing is impossible to God. Say that. Nothing is impossible to God. Say it, receiving your spirit, call your name. Wisdom. Nothing is impossible to God. Say that, child of God. Call your name. Wisdom. Nothing is impossible to God. I want you to declare that. Nothing is impossible to God. Let your spirit man hear that word. Nothing is impossible to God. We stop. Nothing is impossible to God. Declare it one more time. Declare it again. Declare it again, child of God. At this point in time, somebody will go back with a reason to testify to the world. Nothing is impossible to God. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. Nothing is impossible to God. Hear that word. Let it receive resound in your spirit. Nothing is impossible to God. Nothing. Nothing is impossible to God. Nothing is impossible. The dead bones can come back to life. The blind can see. The lame can walk. The body can conceive. Those who have misconception and misdirection can come back to clarity of purpose. Nothing is impossible to God. Cry it out. Hear the word of the Lord wisdom. Nothing is impossible to God. Our lady star of the sea. Hear this word. Nothing is impossible to God. Declare it. Declare it. Nothing is impossible to Him. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. What man calls impossible is not so with God. For He is powerful. He is your creator. He is your ruler. He is a God of awesome wonders. He is the powerful God. Nothing is impossible to God. At this time, child of God, you are sick. You are sick. Lay your hands upon any area of your life where you are sick. The healing anointing is about to move. It's about to move at this time. It's about to move. It's about to move. You are sick at this time. Just only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Just only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Lord, nothing is impossible to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every sickness in your life, dry up now at its root in the name of Jesus. Nothing is impossible to God. Do you believe this? That every sickness in your life dries up instantly in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That your life may be unto greatness, unto joy, unto peace. That everything that God has for you, receive it, manifest it, leave it out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are not alone. 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 Nothing is impossible to God. Every dry thing, every dead thing in your life, shut back to life in the name of Jesus. Every dead thing in your life, in your business, in your career, shut back to life in the name of Jesus. I pray for any man called firstborn at this time. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, you have been created in the image and likeness of God. Begin now to live according to the desires of God for your destiny in the name of Jesus. That the hand of the enemy upon your life dries up now instantly in the name of Jesus. You have been called to live and declare the goodness of the Lord, the mighty works of the Lord, who delivered you from the darkness, from the dominion of darkness, and has brought into his wonderful life. From today, become what God has said you should be. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every power manifesting masquerading itself to destroy your destiny, to destroy your life, to destroy your purpose, to destroy your vision. We cry, Holy Ghost, 
We cry Holy Ghost. We cry Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nothing is impossible to God. What God has for you, you will be so in the name of Jesus. I hand you over to God because the Lord is yet to do something new. Something new in your life. Something new in your business. Something new in your destiny. Something new in your career. Something new in your family. Something new in your life. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it in your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That every evil handwriting, every evil handwriting, in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, we us away now in the mighty name of Jesus. You are a child of God. You will be all that God has said you will be. Nothing shall disrupt it. Every plan that God has for you, manifest into it. Become what God has said you should be. Now and forever, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do something for the Lord as you take your seat. Blessed be your holy name. Nothing is impossible to you. The word of God says, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14 I know that whatever God has, whatever God endures, endures forever nothing can be added to it nor anything taken from it God has made it so in order that men should fear before him when God begins to work in your life Every plan of the enemy to mock your life fails. When God arises in your case, every plan of the enemy to frustrate you fails. It is the one who plans evil against you that runs helter scatter, not you. God has called you to be stable. Stable in the things that you do. Stable in prayer, stable in your work, stable in your assignment. No power sustains the intelligence to take you out of the plan of God. Everything that God has packaged for your destiny, manifest into it in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning we preach a message titled, Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 to 19 says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah 42 verse 15 to 16 says, I will lay waste mountains and hills. And dry up all their herbage. I will turn the rivers into islands. And dry up the pools. Verse 16 says. And I will lead the blind in a way that they know not. In parts that they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light. The rough places into level ground. These are the things I will do. And I will not forsake them. God says, these are the things that I will do, that I will not forsake you. He will not forsake your family. He will not forsake your business. He will not forsake your children. He will not forsake your marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. And the centurion came to him in Matthew chapter 8 verse 8. Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. Just only say the word and my life, the things that are dead in my life, will jack back to life. But only say the word and healing comes to me. Just only say the word, restoration comes. When just only say the word, shame goes away. Just only say the word, guilt banishes. When just only say the word, fear goes away. They bow at the name of Jesus. Just say the word and evil goes away. 
I pray for you, as you have come into the presence of the Lord this morning, you will never go back empty-handed in the mighty name of Jesus. For the Bible tells you and I, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, verse 25 to 34, now while Peter, Paul, and Silas prayed, the Holy Ghost came down. There was an earthquake, and all doors were thrown open. That as you have come into the house of God, believing that God is so powerful, God is so mighty, every closed door, no matter how ancient it is, no matter how the evil powers has programmed, that such a door will never be opened. That as you are praying this morning, and as you are calling upon the name of the Lord, such ancient doors shall be thrown open in the mighty name of Jesus. The God you serve is a miraculous God. He's a miracle-working God. He never fails those who trust in him. He will not fail you. He will never disappoint you. What do you need in order to walk in these prophecies? What do you need to walk in this declaration? You need to understand that you are here to give glory to God. Number two, you are here. You must have faith. It is only faith that brings about the, prof the prophetic declaration in partnership with the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit that makes it a reality in your life. That once you have faith, everything is possible. You can say to this mountain, move and it moves. Do not mind the distraction, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Nothing is impossible to God. In the midst of problem, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of tribulation, you declare upon your soul, you say loud and clear, you call your name. For example, wisdom. Nothing is impossible to God. You say it under your breath. No matter the things surrounding you, you declare it confidently. You declare with all persons of purpose. You declare with all intention. You declare it deliberately. Nothing is impossible to you. And as you are saying it, God begins to do the unimaginable. God begins to do the unimaginable. As you continue to say, nothing is impossible to God. That sickness that is about to claim your life, healing the healing anointing rests upon you. That particular charm that has been laid and say that you will not in your family rise and become something better. God begins to rework everything because you believe that nothing is impossible to God. It does not matter how the enemy is masquerading around you. It does not matter the powers that they have gone to consult. It does not matter the mountains they have climbed. That the only mountain that sustains the possibility and the power is the mountain of the Lord. This is the mountain you have come to this morning. And because you have come to the mountain of the Lord, it shall be declared in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord shall become the highest mountain and every one every generation my family my business everything around me shall be drawn to it because i hear the word of the lord that at the sending of the word of the lord liberty comes to you child of god as you are here this morning i want you to rise on your feet and shout the name jesus he is your God. That every line has been drawn in your life. It cleared out in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be all that God has said you will be. Here in this month of October. In November. In December. He says I am doing new things in your life. Receive it in your destinies. In the name of Jesus. See that everybody. Every time you come into the house of God. Like I told you. When you come for Saturday prayers or you come for mass, you are not a guest. You are a child of God. When you notice that things are not working as planned, before you begin to get angry, take your prayers. You are not here to be entertained. You are not here to say it is their work. No, you are a child of God. And because you're a child of God, you will want your, the, your, the house of your father to be okay. You begin to pray. You begin to intercede. Lord, let everything begin to work according to plan. That God, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I begin to declare that every power that is not of God, sustaining an intelligence to say that they want to spoil the work of God, will repeat.
rebuke that hand. We say, let it be off. And instantly, in one accord, God arises to do his wonders. You are not here to be entertained. You are here to pray. That is to tell you that before you come for Saturday prayer, you should also pray. They pray well, those who first pray before they gather to pray. You are not here to be lifted. You are here to make your life a pleasant offering to God. The first thing that must come to your head every now and then is that I'm here to give glory to the name of the Lord. And when God sees that you are here to give glory to his name, he never disappoints those who call to him. He says, as we quaver, we behold. As we quaver, we are transformed into the image of God. What is the meaning of quaver? Quaver is a Hebrew word that speaks about to wait actively with anticipation, hopefully waiting for the Lord, watching for God to act. I want you to open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. The Bible says, But they who wait, who quaver for the Lord, shall renew their word, their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let this be received in your spirit that you are waiting out the Lord is not in vain. That as you behold the face of God is not in vain. At the end of everything, Romans chapter 8 verse 18 says, everything is unto what glory. Romans chapter 8 verse 18. That at the end of everything that you are doing, that as you are beholding his face, is unto what? Glory. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. There is a glory waiting for somebody. There is a glory waiting for your family. There is a glory waiting for your business. Step into it in the mighty name of Jesus. By the mandate, by this decree of what a prophetic utterance upon our life. Step into it in the name of Jesus. There's a glory waiting for you. That as you are beholding the face of God, men may laugh. Men may chit-chat. That's their business. Why they are chit-chatting? God is doing something new in your life. God is transforming you. God is rewriting your story. God is saying to you, child of God, I still have, I've still not finished with you. You are a work in progress. That the glory of the word, the former, the, the later shall be mightier than the former. That the glory of the later shall be mightier, shall be better, shall be greater than what? The former. That though your beginning may be small, your later ending should be what? Great. So if, you're, if your later end should be great, it means that you must always walk in faith. You must always believe God for his word. You must always declare nothing is impossible to God. And one more time, I want you to declare that to yourself. Nothing is impossible to God. Say that. Say it, not because I'm asking you to say it. Say it with conviction. Nothing is impossible to God. It does not matter the chit-chatting. It does not matter the gathering of the powers of darkness. It does not matter. Nothing is what? Impossible to God. It is while you are saying this that you begin to birth into what? The reality that God has kept for you. Glory. 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 Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, 7, 8 tells you that you are like a farmer sowing. You are sowing. If you sow in the flesh, you will reap what? Frustration. But if you sow in the spirit, you reap what? Eternal life. So while you are seated here, you are sowing into your destiny. While you are paying attention, while you are deliberate and intentional, you are sowing into what your destiny that as you are beholding the face of God you are transiting into what glory because God is the one who can beautify the life of a man not a man beautifying your life if a man is to beautify your life he is first pushed by God 
Then he becomes the one sent to you from God. There was a man sent by God. His name was what? John. What did he come to do? To be a witness to the light. So if your life must be beautified, it means somebody, you need men and women to help make your work easy. Not those around you that will make and say all kinds of things, but those whom God has sent to you, make your work easy. I pray may you receive this in your spirit in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 43 verse 18 to 19, it says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The, this particular entire passage leading up to Isaiah chapter 44 verse 5 reveals something special about God. Reveals something special about the people of Israel. Reveals something special about his relationship with Israel as a nation. And then the manifestation of the power of God. The manifestation of the mercy of God. The manifestation of the love of God. Which will lead ultimately in the restoration of our glory as a nation and as a people. Isaiah 43 verse 11 to Isaiah 44 verse 5. Reveals that God has a special love for his people Israel. And that he has never forgotten them. Even in the moment, in the midst of what? There are trials and sorrows. God never forgets his own. God never forgets his own. I want you to say that in your spirit. God never forgets his own. Say that. Say it with understanding. God never forgets his own. Say that, brothers and sisters. God has always been visible present in the life and history of Israel. And also God by extension has also been present visibly in your life and in your history. He has not forgotten Israel, he's chosen. He released them and delivered them from the land of Egypt. He guided them through the wilderness. This same God will show equal power and kindness by bringing them out of what? The hands of the Babylonians. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 14 to 21. Now this provident care that he takes of them is not a reward that the people has earned it. It stems entirely from his mercy. You cannot end it. You cannot end the love of God. But because you are the delight of the Lord, by his mercy, because of his mercy, his steadfast love for you, despite all our fault, God still delivers you. God delivering you from the hands and the powers of hell. Now because this particular nation Israel is loved by God and because of this special love of God for Israel and the fact that they are the delight of God and God is the one true God, nothing can contend with God. I am breaking it down so they can understand the entire passage, Isaiah chapter 43. Nothing is impossible to God. No one can contend with the power of God. It is not because you deserve it, but because of his love and mercy for you. Because of his love and mercy, that is why he will rewrite your wrong. That is why he will rewrite your story. Because included in his plan is his desire for you to transit onto glory. Your suffering is only short-lived. But only in the end, you will have shouts of joy, shouts of acknowledgement, acknowledging the redemptive power of God over your destiny. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 to 13 reveals the tender care for Israel. Its language is most tender, reassuring and very explicit about God's love. Now in the course of its history, Israel was able to discover that God had only one reason to reveal himself to them. A single motive for choosing them from among all peoples as a special possession. He shared gratuitous love. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 37 tells us that God's love for their ancestors and the choice and for their descendants led him to bring them out of Israel and even drive out nations greater and mightier than they are so as to bring them into their land of inheritance. 
Now the prophets understood this. That it was out of God's love that God never stopped saving the people of Israel. Despite their sinfulness, pardoning them. Despite your sinfulness, God still what? Has mercy for you. God still has love for you. Telling you, you are not unto death. You are unto life. You are not unto being small. You are unto being great in the land. Now this should be a thing of great joy for you and I. For we are God's children. He says, thus says the Lord who created you. O Jacob, he formed who he who formed you. O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are what? You are mine. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1. Because you, are, you have been created in the image and likeness of God. Because you belong to God. Because you are the delight of the Lord. No power will defeat you here. Say a believing amen with understanding. No power will defeat you. I want this thing to enter into your spirit. Because you are the delight of the Lord. Because you are the apple of God's eye. No power sustains the ability and intelligence to defeat you. Let this be your testimony in the name of Jesus. You must continue to resonate this word. Continue to speak into your life. Isaiah chapter 43 tells me. You must say that. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 tells me. It says, the Lord who created me. The Lord who formed me. The Lord says to me, fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. Why would the devil not touch you? Because you have the name of Christ. You have the name of God. Remember, it is not only in profession. It is also in action. You must understand this. You must declare it. No power. If a man goes to do a consult mediums, then because you are the Lord's own, the Lord has called you by his name, no power because the heavens and the earth belongs to the Lord. Job says in Job chapter 5 verse 22, he has made a covenant with the stones of the earth that nothing will bring you harm. So therefore a man who goes to consult any element of creation, he receives instant judgment in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, taught not man anointed unto my prophets no harm. I am telling you the heritage that you have in Christ Jesus. That God is doing something new. First, you must have an understanding. Nothing sustains an intelligence to destroy your life. Before you begin to say, no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. Why are you saying it? First, you have been created in the image and likeness of God. You are called by the name of the Lord. You belong to the Lord. You must understand it. You must speak it. You must declare it. Then as you are declaring it, then every demonic entity assigned to territories, assigned to nations, assigned to systems, assigned to anointing, assigned to mantles, assigned to homes, assigned to businesses, loses their what the assignment because you you are the delight of the Lord. You must always testify this. That faith cometh by hearing. And also in the speaking. If you believe in your heart. And confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord. Then you are saved. This morning. When because of the power outage. Many of you were, we, you, you were already distracted. As a child of God. I am the chosen of the Lord. You only laugh and you begin to speak words. Lord, nothing is impossible to you. It does not matter why people are moping and moping around. It, Lord, nothing is impossible to you. You are the God of all some wonders. You are the miracle worker. You did it in the past. God, you can do it again. Lord, you did it in the past. You can do it again. Lord, you did it in the past. You can do it again. You can call back life into this being. Ah, this is God. You must have this understanding. While your business is not moving well, you can begin to speak words of life. My business rise to life. God has created me and called me to be fruitful. He has given me dominion. He has given me the mandate to what be fruitful and then multiply. This is the spoken words of the Lord. Oh business, receive the word of the Lord. Shut back your life. And this time you begin to see things working according to the word of the Lord. Why? 
Will this happen to you? Because Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 says to me and every day I declare it in my life. This is what the Lord says that I'm created. God has created me. He has formed me. He knew me. He says fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. So if you belong to God, why should the devil terrorize you? You call upon him in the time of need and he will answer you. Now the assurance and reassurance of this word guarantees that we should continue to remain in the Lord. That though you pass through the waters, it will not do what swallow you. When you pass through the rivers, it will not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. This should be your confession every day of your life. And God cares for those whom he truly loves. Verse 4 says, reveals that why will God do all this for you? Because you are precious in his eyes. You are honored in his eyes. He loves you. He will give men up in return for you. This is not a selfish kind of prayer. He will give men up for you, those who do not serve him. Those who are called wicked men, who serve what? Wicked spirits and not give glory to the name of the Lord. Their heritage becomes your heritage. It is not why, it is not the other way around. That why the children of God are sleeping. The evil ones are meeting and planning and taking the heritage of the children of God. Like the Midianites. And God, the spirit of the Lord came to Gideon. dressing wine in the wine press. Said, you are a mighty man of valor. God did not address him as a weak man. He addressed him as what? A mighty man of valor. Rise and claim your possession. That as you begin to wait on the Lord. That why the wicked men are doing what tarrying, you are also tarrying. The power that is the highest power, the God who is the ancient of days, the Ebenezer, the one who is the lion of the tribe of Judah, the miracle worker. When he rises, every lion, not of God, bows at the roaring of God. I pray for you, the Yeshua Hamashiach, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let him arise and roar and let every principalities and power waging a war over your destiny begin to run out and scatter in the name of Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Why will this happen to you? Because you are the precious of the Lord. Everybody say, I am the delight of the Lord. Say, I am the delight of the Lord. God has honored me. Say it, God has honored me. God lost me. Satan, Satan, take your hands off my life. In the name of Jesus. This is not an emotional thing. This is a call to awakening who you are in Christ. The powers that be, principalities and powers, cannot sustain an intelligence to overcome you. They will only overcome you simply because you do not know who you are in Christ. They will only overcome you because you do not know the heritage that has been allotted to you. They will only overcome you because you do not have an understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. He says, and I will give him, give them the keys of the kingdom of God. What is this key? The gift of the Holy Spirit. What is this key? The word of the Lord. What is this key? The ministry of in prayer, intercession, men rising, interceding. Calling upon God. And why the children of Israel called upon God? God arose. And in the camp of the Israelites, there was a mighty roar. And then he brought about what? Fear in the camp of the Philistines. That even when God allowed them to capture the Ark of the Covenant, they took him before their God, Dagon. By morning, 
Dagon bowed before what? The ancient of days. That while you are tarrying at night, you are calling upon the ancient of days, the Ebenezer, the mighty warrior, the one who is seated on the throne, every principalities and power, saying that we want to unseat him, we want to take his position. God arises, then when you come in the morning, they begin to bow at you, they begin to bow, not to you, they are bowing to the God who is in you. And then when they see, they begin to confess that you serve a living God. I pray for somebody, I should return on Monday, I should return on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Let men and women know that you contacted grace and let this grace begin to speak in your life, transforming your life for better. May your life begin to manifest as glory all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. You must never allow yourself to be distracted. This is what God wants you to know. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 14 to 21. This particular oracle is part of the doctrinal core of the book of Consolation. The book of Consolation consists in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 1 to Isaiah 48 verse 22. Where we see the exodus from Egypt as a prototype of every instance of liberation brought about by the Lord. Now the reference here is to the returnees of what? The Babylonian exile. Now the original exodus from Egypt was quite remarkable. And well worth pondering upon how God made them come into contact with what the Red Sea. And then the Red Sea parted. Wonders. The children of Israel walked on dry shore and crossed ashore. And then they turned and the Lord instructed Moses to stretch forth back his head and the waters covered the what? Pharaoh and what? His chariots. But God allowed Pharaoh to see the power of God. But God has done this wonderful thing. God says, I'm going to redeem the children of Israel from the hands of the Babylonian in an extraordinary way. That you do not consider the things of the past. You begin to see the things that God is doing. Now this prophecy is very well constructed. First it acknowledges God by giving an impressive list of divine titles. Repeated several times from verse 14 to 15. Then comes the announcement of the new exodus based on traditions. Now before you understand what God is going to do in the future. You must know what he did in the past. This gives you an assurance to know that there is nothing impossible to God. Nothing is impossible to God. That God in his mercy has made an announcement of a new exodus based on the traditions to do with the first exodus without mentioning the first exodus. God did not mention the first exodus. It is now left for the recipient of this prophetic word to understand and take their minds back first to understand what God did in the past. Then I light it in the present and know that God can do mighty things. Amidst this, it recalls with sadness, yet seriously, the people's infidelities. Now it ends with God asserting his forgiveness in the context of the reed. And that is the legal hearing. That is what we come to say. Present your case before me and let us see how we go about it. That the prophet's word were are designed to fill the people with hope that they will soon be able to return home and also with the energy to undertake the religious restoration of Israel. Remember when you are when there is a siege is laid upon you, every heritage that you have is scattered. You lose a lot of things. That is the assignment of restoration. Restoration comes to closing time. That is why you have the grace of speed that you begin to experience 10, the result of what, 10 years in one day. The result of 20 years in two weeks. God begins to restore. He begins to grant you speed. You begin to assess impossible things and you begin to understand that it is the hand of God. Things that by your own intelligence you cannot do it, but God lifts you up and begins to rearrange your life. The grace of restoration should come upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now this is a strong message to the people of all generation to be reminded our ladies tell the sea those following online to be reminded that God never abandons his own. It is also a call to encouragement to renew your favor in the Lord. 
renew your seal in the Lord. Those who quaver shall mount up wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint all the days of their life. Those who wait upon the Lord, do not be afraid. For God is yet to do something new for our lady star of the sea. Yet to do something for your family. Yet to do something new for your destiny. You must understand this. The only thing that God expects of us is to have recourse to his mercy. Lord, be merciful to me. Everybody cry out to God. Lord, be merciful to me. Open your mouth and say, Lord, be merciful to me. Admit sincerely that you have failed God in so many ways. Lord, be merciful to me. Through spoken words, through actions, Lord, be merciful to me. Lord, be merciful to me. Lord, be merciful to me. Go ahead in one minute and begin to pray. Lord, be merciful to me. Be merciful to my family. Be merciful to my children. Be merciful to me. Be merciful to me. Be merciful. Be merciful. 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 Merciful to me. Ah. Be merciful, O oh God. Be merciful. 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 Be you merciful. look past my ah. sins and guilt and shame, and you poured your love on me. You look beyond me, oh. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 4 verse 1 to 8 reveals two kinds of righteousness. Number one, that it was account, accounted to Abraham because of his faith, righteousness. Abraham's faith was accounted to him as what? Righteousness. So you need faith in the Lord. Faith in the Lord. Number two, a man who confesses his sins it is also accounted unto him as what? Righteousness. Psalm 31 verse 1 to 2 says, Happy the man whose offenses is forgiven. Whose offenses forgiven. Whose sin is remitted. Oh, happy the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt. In whose spirit is no guile. So when you do, do not hide your sin from God, you come to him, Lord, I am a sinner. Like David David is known as to be the man after God's own heart. After God's own heart. Why? Because he had a what? A contrite heart. And because of that contrite heart, it's accounted unto you what? Righteousness. Look at the first string of today's liturgy. It is not the Lord that makes a man righteous, but what? Faith in the Lord that makes a man righteous. And then grace by this very act is extended to what? Your generation. That you walk in obedience and in faith. Your children also eat the good of the land. Because of what? Faith. And this is accounted unto you as what? Righteousness. The one who doesn't hide the sins before God. Is the one whom God calls what? Righteous. Not the one who is sinful. And then brags about it. And makes boasting about it. God says, oh. This very night your soul is demanded of you. May we not die in our sins. You didn't, you didn't hear that prayer. May you not die in your sins in the name of Jesus. That before your death, may God arise to show you mercy. That you do not transit from this world to the next world in sin. Because you are going in Nigeria. is so difficult. You will suffer in Nigeria and you will suffer in hell. I reject that for your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. So they have an opportunity to go for confession. Go for confession. Cry to God. Lord be merciful to me. Joel chapter 1 and 2 says. Let the priest stand at what the altar, the sanctuary. And cry out what the children of Israel to what? Repent. You must repent. Wash your robes and make them clean. This particular scripture passage is what we read during the Lent. But Lent is not only a time when you cry for mercy. Mercy is what you cry for to the Lord every day. Every day. Every day. We must take advantage of the sacrament of what reconciliation. Not to abuse the grace of God, but take advantage of it. In the world, you will make mistakes because you are doing the will of God. And as you are doing the will of God, many things will do or distract you. 
That is why you may actually fall, but then there is a sacrament that what heals you. There's a sacrament that reconciles you to God. That sacrament is a sacrament of what penance, the sacrament of reconciliation. Go to it every now and then. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is saying to you again that we must continue to call, cry to him, otherwise Satan will take advantage of it. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10 calls him the accuser of our brethren. He can accuse you before God. And when he begins to accuse you, you do not stand the chance of receiving divine attribution, divine help and all that. But because you can actually receive this divine help because there is the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. We have overcome him by what? The blood of the Lamb. And then by what? The words of what? Our testimony. So the blood of the Lamb is very important. The speaking of the saints is also important. I am redeemed. God has washed me clean. I stand before God faithfully. Waiting upon him eagerly that he may show me mercy. May he show us mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, God says on the basis of this definitive victory over sin, remember not the former things and nor consider the things of old. What does this mean? It means that as you begin to seek the face of God, God is a progressive God. If you do not want to remain sterile and obsolete, you must always grow capacity to consecrate yourself before God daily. Because what God is doing at this time is different from what he's, going to, what he's going to do in the next hour. You must continue to wait upon him. You must quaver in faith, waiting upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord. Waiting upon him every day, morning and night. Even as you're going to work, you're waiting upon the Lord. You're meditating on his word. Joshua chapter 1, reading from verse 1 to 8, it says, Joshua, you will succeed as you continue to meditate on the laws of the Lord. Number two, he who seeks God to walk with God must always stay connected with God, searching and seeking his face. The result of this is that you will always be fresh, always new, and you will stay relevant, both in your business. I told you on Sunday that your relevance in your business, your relevance in that position is not running after men. It's not cracking your head. It's not in reading books. It is as you read books, which is very important for what your personal upbuilding, you consult the face of God. He gives you ideas. Ideas that addresses the needs of the people. And then you come, you return to your business. Every time you open your mouth to talk, the Lord gives you utterance. The spirit of wisdom finds expression in your life. And what happens? Your, 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 your CEO, your bosses begin to say, there is something about this man. And then because they notice that something about you, they begin to increase you in ranks and the, the file of the company. And you begin to grow beyond lips and bounds. This is the secret. A man who runs helter scatter will be filled with what? Jealousies and anger because it's what he's sowing in the flesh. But when you sow in the spirit, you consult God. Lord, what do you see about this business? What do you see about this transaction? I need clarity. I need your direction. Help me, oh God. Take away confusion from my eyes. Lord, I want to make, I want to build this particular house. What are you saying? Lord, where do the resources come from? Lord, yes, I have the money. Lord, help me to gain what the right workers, not men and women that will come to me and waste my resources. God gives you the right person. But before that comes into your life, you must actually stay in prayer. Even as you are driving, you can pray which is called the practice of the presence of God. Wherever you are, you are calling upon God. Look at this morning. I stayed here while they were walking. I was praying, asking God, do your work. You have never failed. Show up. You have never failed. Nothing is impossible to you. Nothing is impossible. Then when you open your mouth to speak, grace issues forth. I pray for you. May God give you utterance in the name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is saying to you, it's a call to forget the former sorrows. Forget the past. Forget the past. Over dependence on the achievement of the past. Why? Success is good, but over celebrating it can actually become a problem and a stumbling block. 
unto your growth. The day you say you have achieved success, that is a day you begin to stop succeeding. Every day you must always do something new. You must go forward. Why should you forget the pains and sorrows of the past? Because it can keep you wallowing in regret, stealing your joys, and it brings you on to pain and misery. And you will never see what God is about to do in your life. But as you begin to think positive, then your life begins to transit. But when you begin to think negative, negative things all around you because your life and the result in your life is according to your thinking. As a man thinketh in his mind, so he is. You open your mouth negative things. But when you continue to move yourself away from the past, when you speak, you are speaking fresh things, ideas, good things begin to gravitate onto you. Depending too much on the pain of the past can make you very vulnerable and weak. A prey to the strong spoils your current position, your relationship, your achievement. It makes you depressed and feel like committing suicide. Feeling like ending it all. Satan can take you to advantage of this. The past is necessary that will help you to know that you need to continue to move forward. But the present, what God is doing in your life every day, you must ask God to open your eyes. It is a call to unto new vision, vision about yourself. Exodus chapter 14, it says, when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, Moses was afraid. The children of Israel were afraid. The Lord told Moses, tell the people of Israel to go forward. The assignment is what? Go what? Forward. Say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I go forward by light. I go forward by light. In the name of Jesus. Where will they go turn to? If they go back, the Egyptians will capture them. Now it will tell them that what? They do not serve a living God. But God wanted to show his might. Nothing is impossible to the Lord. And he said, children of Israel, march forward. And then he stretched out his hand. Moses was confused. He said, what do you have in your hand? You see, when God is doing something new, he opens your eye to the gifts that you have. It is your gift. The Bible says the gift of a man make it a way for a man. True or false? So he opens your eyes and he says, stretch forth your hand. And instantly there was a divine activity. The water spattered to the amazement of what? The, the Egyptians. And they cried out. Remember, there was a pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. The power of God, the angels, the chariots of God, they changed what station. And then there was darkness unto the, 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 the Egyptians. But the children of Israel, they walked in what light. So he tells you he's the light of the world. So as we continue to come to him, you will never walk in darkness. Darkness is meant for those who stay outside of God. He says, go forward. You are destined to march forward. You are marching forward in October. You are marching forward in November. You are marching forward in December. January, February, March. All the days of your life, you are going forward in the name of Jesus. You are going forward. You are going forward. Begin to pray. You are going forward. I go forward. Never to go backward. Never to go backward. Nigeria, go forward. My family, go forward. My business, go forward. My vocation, go forward. My destiny, go forward. Because God has changed the position. He has brought the angel of light to lead me onto my destiny. I go forward by light and by revelation. Somebody's praying. Open your mouth and pray. You are not here wasting your time. Pray, child of God. You are going forward. Go forward by light, by revelation. Every day of your life, your business is moving forward. You are moving forward in your career. You are moving forward in your destiny. You are moving forward in that thing that God has said you will be. You are not a failure. You are not unto useless things. You are unto light. New dimensions. New possibilities. More layers in the spirit, in the Holy Ghost. Move forward and let us start the sea by revelation, by understanding. In the name of Jesus. Somebody pray. Behold, I do something new. Do not assess yourself because of your family background. Do not assess yourself because of the failures of the past. 
Do not assess yourself because people have criticized you. Do not assess yourself because people have judged you wrongly. Do not assess yourself because of the mistakes. God is doing something new. He's doing something new. He's doing something new. He's doing something new. He's doing something new. Receive it to your spirit in the name of Jesus. What is he asking you to do? To behold. Behold. To behold. To behold his face. What does behold mean? To fix your gaze onto him. What does he mean? He said to be attentive. What does he mean to behold? To observe with care. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Many of us are running helter scatter, but every mass you attend, the priest lifts up the what? The consecrated body of Christ and he says what? Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Are you blessed as you are here? Are you counted as those who are blessed? You are blessed because you are in the assembly of the faithful. He says, behold. As you behold, you begin to transit. As you behold, you begin to evolve. As you behold, you begin to transform into a living and better image. That the judgments of the past do not matter because you are a work in progress. God is doing something new. Remember, as you behold, you need stamina. Distractions will come. People will make a jest of you. But then as you are beholding his face, you are growing. You are transforming. It just only takes one day, one moment for you to transit into what God has said you will be. Remember, as you are beholding, Holding, your season of appearing is coming unto you. Your season of appearing is gravitating towards you. Only waiting for the manifestation. Then you will come into mass one day and the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Waiting for you to arrive. That while you come into the house of God, it now becomes your day when you enter into the today of the Lord. Then your life begins to change. I pray for somebody who is beholding the face of God. Receive power. Receive grace. Let your gift manifest. Be what God has said you will be in the name of Jesus you are beholding beholding his face and the Bible says and we with unveiled faces behold his face and we are transformed from one degree of glory unto another glory if you must be transformed you must behold if you must come to result you must behold if, you're, if the powers of hell attacking your family will give way, you must behold. It is while you are beholding that God is fighting your battles. It is while you are beholding that God is changing the narrative. It is while you are beholding. God does not mind to change your location. He brings you to the place where he has kept for you. So that those who know bad things about you, the Lord wipes them apart and begins to set you on a new path. Any man or woman who says, let us mock him. God does not mind to silence that person forever because you are the delight of the Lord I pray for you as you are beholding unto God may you manifest in your season may you manifest in your season in the name of Jesus this is something new something new the healing is coming he's doing something new breakthrough is coming revival is coming restoration is coming Job opportunities coming. Destiny helpers are coming. He's opening your eyes to newer dimensions. Rise on your feet and begin to pray. Something new. Open your mouth. Lord, do something new in my life. Do something new. That thing that you have for my family, begin to do it. Somebody open your mouth and begin to pray. Oh God, that thing that is new that you have kept for me. Lord, I behold it. Lord, as I'm beholding, I'm evolving. Lord, as I behold your face, I am seeking. I am seeking your face. That thing that you have kept for me is manifesting it's coming to me i desire something new is coming to me remember all the things you are looking for is also looking for you but as you behold his face you are being transformed then they become to light unto you you are looking for healing you are looking for restoration you are looking for revival you are looking for deliverance as you behold so the new things come somebody go ahead and pray bring it to pray child of god we behold until we hey. are found. Oh yes. We behold oh, yes. until we are found. As you behold. We behold, behold. until we are found. Behold. We behold. I do a new thing. God is raising an army for you. He's raising an army for you. 
is what we have for you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I behold your face. That my destiny help us are coming to you. Oh, God is raising me in the finances. As I behold his face, my helpers are coming to me. Oh, God, as I behold you, healing is coming to me. As healing is coming, as I behold job opportunities, new dimensions, as I behold, grace is being multiplied. As I behold, opportunities, as I behold, he's granting me answers to my prayers. As I behold, favor, the mantle of favor rests upon me. Somebody's praying. Hey, child of God, pray. Until we have strength, until we have strength, until we have strength, we be hold, we be hold, until we have strength, we be hold, we be hold, until we have strength, we be hold, until we have we be hold, we be hold, until we have strength, as we be hold, we have until we have strength, we have we have until we have strength, we have. We have strength until we have strength until we have strength until we have strength we be hold we be hold until we have strength we be hold we be hold until we have strength 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 we be hold until we Everything meant for my good. Lord, let it begin to manifest unto my life. So I pray, O oh God, in the spirit, change my story. As I behold your face, that every judgment from the pit of hell becomes silent. As I behold your face, the scourge of men's talk becomes what? Silent. Lord, my God, you are reanimating my life unto praises. Someone's praying. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, as you behold his face, those things that are dead in your life can come back to life. You didn't hear that prayer. As you behold his face, things that are dead in your business can come back to life. As you behold his face, restoration can come to you. Everything that has left your life still remains in this earth realm. That you can call it back to life. That as you have behold it, it comes in a newer way. And then Job, as he beheld the face of God, he received a double portion of everything he has lost. I pray for you. Receive it to your destinies in the name of Jesus. This is what God is saying to you. It means that as you behold his face, the Lord is delivering you from the scourge of men's tongues. As you behold the face of God, he said to the woman caught in adultery, has anyone condemned you? She said, no one. He said, neither have I. Go and say no more. As you behold his face, you are being transformed. As you behold his face, every accusation from the pit of hell becomes silent in the mighty name of Jesus. As you behold his face, he begins to arise to fight your accusers. As you behold his face, he begins to silence those who want to destroy your destinies. As you behold his face, he begins to arrange your story onto perfect things now and forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, send your Holy Spirit once again unto my life, O God, to enable me, O God, to discern, to discern, to discern what you are doing per season, per time, and give me the grace to partner with you, O God. Go ahead in one minute and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Send your Holy Spirit once again unto me to give me the grace to discern what you are doing per season per time that i may partner with it the grace never to be away from it but the grace to remain the grace to remain to tarry to wait eagerly waiting for you to act oh god pray child of god pray oh god i cry to you help me oh god pray Yes. We be hold until we have We be hold We be hold until we have Yes, we be hold We be hold until we have We be hold We be hold until we have We come up We come up until 
till we have strength. We the power. We the power till we have strength. We the power. We the power till we have strength. Until we have strength. Until we have strength. We be hold. We be hold until we have strength. We be hold. We be hold until we have strength. We be hold. We be hold until we have strength. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So you are not wasting your time as you are seeking the face of God. This is why the word of God tells you in Psalm 63, it says, O God, thou art my God, I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh faints for thee as in a dry and weary land where no water is. So I have, verse 2 says, so I have looked upon thee in thy sanctuary, beholding thy power and then what? Thy glory. Go ahead one minute and say, Father in the name of Jesus, grant me the same power. Pray, child of God, grant me the same power to behold your presence every day of my life. That I may see your power and your glory in my life, in my family, in my business, oh God. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Grant me the same power to behold your face, oh God. Never to be distracted. To behold you need stamina. You need power. The same power to remain in the Lord. Child of God, open your mouth and pray. Pray. Yes, he will we be hold. We be hold until we have fun. We be hold. We be hold until we have fun. Lord, my God. We be hold until we have fun. We be hold. Of God, do not joke at this time. Somebody's face is about to change. Something is about to happen in your life. Hey, until we are in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, every spoken word over my destiny from this sanctuary, oh God, I lay hold of it. Let it find expression in my life. Producing extraordinary results in my life. In the name of Jesus. Somebody go ahead and begin to pray. Begin to pray, child of God. Every spoken word of God upon my destiny. I lay hold on it. Let it find expression in my life. Producing mighty results. Falling online here present. Pray. Pray, child of God. Yes, pray. Pray. The Lord in his mercy will never fail you. He will never fail you. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to be very serious because this is about, this particular moment, God is about to take away the stronghold of pressing your life. Ah, there's nothing impossible to the Lord. Nothing impossible to the Lord. Nothing impossible to Jesus. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I enforce the victory and dominion of the cross over every unclean spirit, tormenting my life and my family, tormenting my business. I exercise dominion and victory over it as a child of God. Over every evil yokes, over every evil causes, sicknesses, 
repeated afflictions, near success syndrome, failure and disappointment, success at the point of breakthrough, failure at the point of breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I enforce victory, I enforce dominion over every unclean spirit. Pack and go in the name of Jesus. Oh, pray, my time, begin to pray. Begin to pray, child of God. Begin to pray. Begin to pray, child of God, and force of victory, and force of dominion over every unclean spirit, over every unclean spirit, over yokes, demonic activities, demonic assignment over your life. He has given you power and authority over this unclean spirit. Declare it, and force it. Let it be your rule of life. Decree and declare every power tormenting your family, tormenting your destiny. Do not call it ordinary because there are demonic entities assigned to families, assigned to regions, assigned to locations, assigned to parishes, assigned to churches, assigned to mantles, assigned to home. Satan, take your hands off my life, off my destiny. Somebody is praying. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray. Pray. Take your hands off. Take your hands off. This is the heritage of the Lord. Take your hands off, Satan. We rebuke you in the name of God the Father. We rebuke you in the name of God the Son. We rebuke you in the name of God the Holy Spirit. You principalities and powers operating in the high places. Say we shall not bet unto the purposes that God has kept for us. We judge you now by the blood of the Lamb. By the word of our testimony, we decree and enforce victory over every demonic activity, over every demonic power. Now gathered in assembly in any place at this time, waiting for the failure of the children of Israel. Lord we decree and declare they come to judgment now in the name of Jesus they come to judgment in the name of Jesus say father in the name of Jesus let there be a visible performance an expression of the power of the word of God in my life in my family in my business bringing me good news all the days of my life in the name of Jesus go ahead and begin to enforce it let there be a manifestation of the word of the Lord I enforce the word of the Lord word of God sent to me behold I do a new thing oh God I am waiting for it I am a God is gracing and is for me let this word find expression in my life do something new in my family take away the hands of the enemy give me peace oh God give me joy let my children come up again. Let them continue to rise. No more death in my family. No more destruction in my family. Somebody's praying. Pray, child of God. Pray. 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 Yes. Pray. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yay! Yeah. The hands of the enemy is off. They are going away. Go, 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 I cover my life, I cover my family, I cover my business, I cover everything about me with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Go ahead and begin to cover it. Begin to cover it with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Begin to cover it. Cover it. My life shall move on to glory after glory. On to glory after glory. Glory after glory. All the days of my life. The blood of Jesus. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pray. Great child of God. Do not joke with this moment. Young and old. God, this is a deliverance section. God is actually delivering you from the hands of the enemy. Pray. At the count of three, pray, child of God. Pray. One, two, three. Let every power trouble your life. Begin to go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Now the next prayer point you're going to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
every demonic assignment to take me out of my position so that I will not be what God has said I will be. Holy Ghost! Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, cast it out. Pray, child of God. Your assignment, every assignment from the pit of hell. If you are standing seated, I want you to rise. God wants you to do something new. To take you out of your position, every plan, every assignment from the eight altars of darkness to whisk you out of your position, they receive judgment instantly in the name of Jesus. Somebody's praying. Pray. The power of God is about to move now. Move, 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 move. In a spectacular way. In an extraordinary way, oh God. We believe nothing is impossible to you. No power, no evil presence can survive this now. This particular power of God can survive it now. No, they can't. They are out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your position will be your position. You will not be taken out of position. Rather, you will continue to grow from one position onto another position. Glory after glory in the name of Jesus. If you are seated, please stand. God wants to do something now. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. Remember, you must call that name with understanding. What I'm seeing now is the face of the mighty God, the, the, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's about to roar that every principality and power standing in your way as you call the name Jesus. They begin to bow. They begin to melt away. They pack their bags and packages and begin to disappear. At the count of three, one, two, three, call the name Jesus. Need to go, 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 go. Nothing is impossible to you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Jesus, Jesus, you are the mighty man in battle. You are the man of war. Oh God, our Father, we declare, we declare. Let it go now. Let it go now. Go, 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 go. Child of God, and receive your deliverance. 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 In the name of Jesus. Remember that every time we gather, there is a moment of praise. There is a moment of worship. There is a moment of the word of God. There is a moment of declaration. There is a moment of impartation. There is a moment of deliverance. This is the deliverance time. I pray every marine altar study in a way against your destiny. Holy Ghost, receive judgment instantly now in the name of Jesus. Every mirror used to monitor you monitor your progress monitor your life say your family will come to nothing that your resources will dry up in the name of jesus we say holy ghost they break now they break they break they break they break now instantly in the name of jesus from today now this is an impartation from today everything that god has for you will begin to walk in it Begin to walk in it. 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 In the name of Jesus. Everybody stretch your hands to the altar. There is a hand that lifts a man. It is not the hand of Father Wisdom. It is a hand of He who is the Alpha and Omega. I stretch my hands as one sent to you. As a priest and prophet and king, I decree and I declare, may the hand of the Lord begin to lift you up unto great height in the mighty name of Jesus. Enter your season of announcement. Enter your season of announcement in this month of October. Every announcement waiting for you in your place of work. Promotion, promotion, promotion. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. He is your satisfaction and fulfillment. You will never be hungry. You will never die suddenly. You will be what God has said you will be. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you. 
Wherever you go, stretch your hands to the altar. You are receiving something that the eyes cannot see. Grace that the eyes cannot see. This is a grace at work in our life. That as you come in contact with the grace upon our life and you believe it, you begin to see yourself walking in a new dimension. I pray for you at the count of three. One, two, three. The mantle of favor rests upon you now in the name of Jesus. Everywhere that the name of your business is sent to, receive favor there in the name of Jesus. Receive favor in the name of Jesus. Receive favor in the name of Jesus. Open doors, open doors, open doors, open doors in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Ah. He's a God of awesome wonders. He said, Behold, I do something new. Ah, if there have been any closed door by any demonic agency, as Paul and Silas were praying, as Paul and Silas were praying, as you pray this morning, in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, as you call the name Jesus, let those ancient doors begin to open now. One, two, three, call the name Jesus. Open, 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 in the name of Jesus. Behold, I do something near. 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 In your family, something new. In your business, something new. In your business, something new. In your position, something new. In your career, something new. In your destiny, something new. Receive it now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Healing anointing now. Anywhere of your body that is paining you, lay your hands upon it. He is a healer. Receive the healing. Receive healing now. Receive healing. Receive healing. Receive healing. Receive healing. Receive healing. Dr. Jesus is moving in a special way. Receive your healing. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No one serves the Lord and remains small. Everywhere you go, good things. He's doing something new. Every gift you need, some of you fire in your hands. Fire in your hands. Your hands will begin to get hot. You begin, begin to get hot. At this time, receive it, receive it, receive it. You have been called into the gift of healing, the healing ministry. Receive it now, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it in your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Your eyes receive the gift of vision, the gift of vision. Begin to see mighty things. Begin to see. Begin to prophesy. Begin to be called into the grace of prayer. The mantle of prayer. The ministry of prayer. Receive it. The gift of intercession. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you Jesus. Everything you are desiring of the Lord. In one minute. In one minute before we close, before we go, open your mouth and say, everything I deserve the Lord, Lord, let it begin to find expression in my life. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Intentions that have not been mentioned here, everything you deserve the Lord. In this atmosphere of prayer, receive it. Receive it. Oh, you are the door opener. You are the light. You are the liberator. Nothing is impossible to you. Ah, nothing is impossible to you, Jesus. Nothing is impossible to you. Nothing is impossible to you. I believe it as your priest. I speak about it to your people before you. Nothing is impossible. Answer their prayers. Do mighty things, oh God. For them, oh God. 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, sing that song. Something more than gold. Something more than silver. The Spirit of God in the heart of man is something more than gold. Something more than gold. Something more than gold. Something more than silver. Something more than silver. The Spirit. The Spirit of God in the heart of man is something more than good. Something more than good. Something more than good. Something more than silver. Something more than silver. The Spirit of the Lord in the heart of man is something more One more time. Something more than good. Something more than good. Something more than silver. The spirit of the Lord in the heart of man is something more than gold. Wherever you go, you have received something as you sang that song. Something more than gold. This is what you have today. Go and testify. Go and sing a new song. Before the end of the month, your testimony is waiting for you. Your testimony is waiting for you. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Let us come out now for our thanksgiving, please, brothers and sisters. Jesus so nyo bebere odogu akataka imere di mu manaru na ni bi akwanara ekele awa e chuku ebela awa e chuku da kwara wa ebele Ikonejo <laughs> Whoa! 
May the Lord revive your prayer life. May the Lord revive your prayer life in the mighty name of Jesus. When you experience this spiritual dryness, God is still around you. He wants you to come deeper, deeper, deeper. May you continue to have passion and hunger for the Lord in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Give it up to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We appreciate Father Israel. Thank you. Father Israel, please put your hands together for him. Let us be seated. Let us be seated. We also appreciate all our, the, our brothers and sisters who work behind the scene, the technical crew, to ensure that our, our sound was restored. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. I just want to advise that every time we come to Mass, it is not only my assignment to pray. When you come into the house of God, you notice anything, lift up the voice of prayer. Nobody should remind you. Don't be ashamed. You are not a guest. You are a child of God. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Eh? And the Lord in his mercy, we're going to do wonders in our lives through Christ our Lord. It takes a lot to ensure that Saturday prayer is the way it is. So please let us not be discouraged. Let us continue to press on in the spirit. Thank you, the worship team. Please put your hands together for the worship team. Working day and night to ensure that they come to our, our Saturday prayer is better and better and better. And also clap for yourself who have never lost faith. You're still here. Clap for those following online. God loves you. We appreciate you. And we're going to grow onto the, into the image that God desires of you through Christ our Lord. This evening, the foundation class continues. 
And let us continue to bless the name of the Lord. Next week is our testimony, all right? So if you, am I right? That's the last Saturday now. That's last Saturday. So if you have your, your, your testimony, please meet Mr. Joseph, Brother Joseph, or you meet Mr. Eucharist and write your testimony. Any little thing that God has done in your life is worth thanking God. I'm going to give you time to thank God. This week we're entering is a week of thanksgiving. So write your testimonies and then if you are ashamed and you cannot talk, write it. But you are confident you want to talk about it, to actually come out to talk about your testimony. The Lord is going to bless us through Christ our Lord. Thank you very much. Let us go. What did I 
did I do? To see that your right hand, what did I do? God said when we are yet soon, He came. When we had no anointing, when we had no help, when we had no Christ, when we had no pride, nothing, nothing to show. No car, no house, no money, yet he came. Have you ever asked yourself one question? What did you do to deserve this kind of love? Just lift up your hands and begin to bless him. It is good to dance. It is good to jump up. But sometimes it's good we reflect. Just begin to bless it. Why not think down into what he has done for you? I'm amazed, I'm amazed, I'm amazed, you came through for me, what be the way, what be the way, Sits upon the throne. What is the Lamb that sits upon the throne? What did I do to deserve this kind of love? What did I do to sit at your right hand? What did I do to deserve this kind of love? 